Hey guys, we're gonna work on slope review. So this is how I like to teach slope. If you draw a little guy on the left-hand side of all of your lines, all of them, always on the left, I'm gonna choose a different color. We'll make him blue. And always on the left, oh no. Okay, so this guy is going uphill. So uphill is a positive slope. This guy is going downhill. Downhill is a negative slope. This guy is walking on a flat surface, but he is walking, so it has a slope. It's just a zero slope. In other words, it equals a number, it's just zero. This poor guy is gonna fall down and die on the ground. And if he dies, that is an undefined slope. Okay, I feel bad for making him die. Instead, let's put a parachute on him. But the point is, is if he can't walk on it, it's undefined. Okay, so to find slope given a graph, we use rise over run. All right, so we have these points. First of all, draw your little guy. Is it gonna be a positive or a negative slope? It's gonna be positive, because he's walking uphill. And let's make him some steps to walk up. He has to rise one, two, three, four steps. And then he'll have to run one, two, three, four, five steps. So my slope is four fifths. Next one, draw my little guy. He is walking downhill, which means it's gonna be a negative slope. Let's give him some steps to walk down. He's going to run one, two, three, four, five, six. And then he's going to rise, but actually fall, <laughs> whichever, three. And three goes into both of those. We're gonna divide both the top and the bottom by three, which will give us negative one, and six divided by three is two, so negative one half. This one, remember I told you that it's our little guy, and oh no, he's gonna die because he can't walk on anything. You better make him a, a, we gotta make him a parachute so he doesn't die. So let's make him a parachute. All right. Now it's an undefined slope. And then, of course, our little guy here will walk down on a straight surface. And he can walk on it. It's just a flat surface, which makes it a zero slope. Okay, if you're given ordered pairs, we have to use an equation which means that you subtract your y's over your x's. All right. So you label all of these x2, y2, x1, y1. Now you could have flip-flopped these. This could have been x1, y1, and this one x2, y2. It doesn't matter. As long, the only thing you cannot do, cannot do, is do an x1, y2. The, the numbers, these numbers have to be the same. You can't do that, okay? But otherwise, it doesn't matter which order you put it in. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. My y2 is 5 minus my y1 is negative 1. My x2 is negative 2 minus my x1, which is six. Five minus a negative one, this is plus, which makes it six. Negative two minus six is negative eight. Now two can go into both of these. A positive and negative makes the whole thing negative. Six divided by two is three, eight divided by two is four. So we'll reduce to negative three fourths.
I just like to make the first one twos because I read from left to right, and that way I put it in the formula from left to right also. That's really the only reason. All right, y2 is negative 3 minus y1, which is 7. x2 is negative 11 minus x1, which is negative 6. Negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10. Negative, minus a negative means plus. So negative 11 plus 6 is negative 5. 5 can go into both. Well, actually, let's just call it what it is. This is a division. Negative 10 divided by negative 5 is a positive 2. Subtract your y's over your x's. So x2, y2, x1, y1. All right, y2 is negative 4 minus y1 is 2. x2 is 9 minus x1, which is also 9. This gives me negative 6 over 0, and we cannot have 0 in a denominator, so it is undefined. And x2, y2, x1, y1. My y2 is negative 3 minus my y1, which is negative 3. My x2 is negative 7 minus my x1, which is 0. Minus a negative is plus, which gives me a 0 on top. Negative 7 minus 0 is negative 7, but 0 divided by anything is just 0. Okay, if you have trouble figuring out which one of these is okay and which one isn't, we need to take you back to elementary school. All fractions are what you have over what exists every single time. So we're going to talk about Lamborghinis and unicorns and the way that they have to deal with slope. Okay, so it is possible to not have a Lamborghini, and yet we are well aware that they exist. Let's say that there are five in existence. I don't know how many are in existence, but you got the point. It's possible to do that because I don't have a Lamborghini, but I know they exist. I've seen them before, um, but I definitely do not have the salary to be able to have one. So this one's possible, which gives us a slope of zero because it is possible. Now, what is not possible, and I'm sorry for those of you who think that unicorns are real, but they're not, so 5 over 0. My daughter likes to tell me that maybe they exist in the universe somewhere else since the universe is infinite, and I let her think so. But as far as Earth is concerned, they do not exist. So it's not possible to have 5 unicorns when they don't exist. So this is what happens when it's undefined. So remember, it's always what you have over what exists. You have a Lamborghini. Or do you have a unicorn? And that'll tell you whether it's undefined or no slope. And that's the end of these notes.